All right, let's do this. This will be the most difficult video I have ever recorded. Uh, what we will do here, uh, now I have Vivaldi open uh, with my profile. This is not the, the configuration we have been working on in the previous videos here. Uh, but I will show you now uh, where I want to take this video. So I will open the subreddit wallpapers, which is uh, the source of all my dank wallpapers, you know. Uh, and then let's just use the keyboard here, scrolling down with space, uh, expanding Thunder Road there, you can see that, or maybe not Thunder Road. Let's take um, USS Stethem there. I press F and then I press HH. And that should have expanded uh, that um, instead of clicking this thing here, I pressed FF or FH now. Uh, and then we can see it expands the, the thumbnail. When I hover this image here, if you look in the status bar, you can see the URL where this uh, link now points to. And that URL is uh, to an image. Uh, and of course, I could just press uh, capital F, for example. And now, if I follow this link, HS, it will open uh, that um, link in a new tab. And here we can see, and this is the full image, you know. Check this out. Uh, where I want to take this video is uh, creating our own hint. So now, I, instead of pressing F, I press S. Get some hints. I select this KD. And now you can see it opened a menu here at the top of the window. This is actually Rofi. If I select WP here for wallpaper, uh, it asks me where say wallpaper as. We can do a new wallpaper about. Press enter, and there you can see it uh, changed wallpaper. And if we give it a minute here, uh, because it uh, also added it to BWP, which uh, in turn converts it and, and uh, creates uh, the blurred version and stuff. And it's now available here in my little library of wallpapers. Um, that's where I want to take this video. And that is need some advanced crazy dirt hacking to, to get here. First and foremost, let's exit out of my private uh, profile here and enter the Tootsie profile, which is the one we have been using up until now. We'll also do this if we create a double window here, don't worry. Whew. All right, this, this, is, uh, th this will be a journey. Um, and maybe we should start here. Uh, in the last video, I asked if someone knew a better way to do this. I do pgrep f uh, search for the server uh, by writing the name of the script that the server is running. Uh, and I only, on, only did this in, in the start Vivaldi script here uh, to see if the server was running or not. If it wasn't, I started the server. But I didn't like this pgrep because it takes so much time. Uh, and I got some great replies. Um, Emanuele here uh, say that we can use netcat or the nc command, uh, which is very much faster. It's about, uh, this takes somewhere around 100 to 200 milliseconds. Netcat takes somewhere around 10 to 15 milliseconds uh, doing the same thing. Or they don't actually do the same thing because pgrep, it, it searches for a process. Netcat, uh, you can do all kinds of things with Netcat, but uh, here, if we use it with a zero option here, uh, then we just uh, see if there is any activity on this address. And this address is where the web server is running. So we are not testing for the process, we are testing for uh, the server. Uh, but um, Emanuele also points out that this might not be the perfect solution since we need to hard code uh, the port number we want to test for, which have to correspond with the port number we are uh, the server is running. And another thing we will do a lot in this video is we will whatever. 
I have to kill the currently running server here before we do anything else. So I do this there. Um, start Vivaldi, starting the Python script here. Starting here, I just have to check that. Yep. Start Vivaldi, starting server. We can do pgrep and see that it's a different PID here. But now we can also use uh, the netcat command zero option and then address one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one um, and the port number eighty zero one six milliseconds that that's uh, that's much faster than one hundred and sixty one right but it doesn't do anything it doesn't print anything but we can actually use it here uh, with test so we can say echo running and there it says running because this uh, is uh, didn't exit with the error exit. But if we test for a port that isn't existing, you can see then we don't get any running. So <laughs> this is a bit faster and much better. Um, but the problem though is that we have to know the port number, and of course we do know the port number here because we have we know it. Uh, but uh, I kind of recommend that you change this port number. Uh, and to do that, we need to do a couple of things. Let's kill the server again. One thing you need for, for this uh, VB4C server to work is that you also in the config, the VB4C config, uh, have to specify the vim port variable here to point to the port that you want to use and by default it is set to 8001 so you don't have to change this if you tend, intend to use this port but if we would change this to something else like, let's say just 54 uh, then we would also have to change it here to 8054 and we would have to change it now in our start vivaldi because we will use now netcat here instead and to 8054 and also I know that we maybe should redirect the output of the server the the error output uh, to dev null but I actually think we, we keep it now in this video because it's good to see if something breaks then we will get a very visual indication that is that it isn't working but this is super inconvenient you know remembering to enter the same port number everywhere um, and also I don't really like that we have to modify this python script uh, I, uh, when we are done here i would like it so that we never have to edit this python script itself and the best way to do this uh, since we are using, using bash here and python here and so on um, we can actually use environment variables instead so instead of setting hard coding the port number to 8054 here we can use the OS package, uh, which is already imported here in the script, uh, and that contains the function getEnv, which uh, lets you retrieve an uh, environment variable. So we can look for the environment variable vb4c port, uh, and then port here will be equal to vbc4 port. You can set a default value here as well which I guess is a good idea to do with this script. Um, and now uh, it will test here for, for this environment variable. And then we can use the same environment variable in our start Vivaldi script here. VB4C port. Uh, and then I like to do this, as you know, um, may know, to test for environment variable in bash. Uh, vb4c underscore port if that is not set set it to the default 8001 so this line here is uh, more or less the same thing as uh, this line here in python um, well i guess if it looked like this it would be more or less exactly the same but whatever all right, so this means that uh, it should work, but it isn't really the case because we also now we we 
we test here if this uh, variable is an environment variable at the top of the script and then um, use that. But if this is not uh, a known environment variable and we execute the Python script here, then Python, of course, will not, even if we can use, we, we default here the variable vb4c port to 8001 and can use it here. But it is not an environment variable, then it would be a normal variable. So to be sure uh, that Python knows about this environment variable, we can export it before we execute this, the server script here. So we export this uh, vb4c port uh, variable out into the environment. Um, but if it would be set as an environment variable in, for example, your bash rc or maybe x init or where, wherever you set environment variables, then it doesn't matter here that we export it again. It will export the same uh, uh, variable with the same value as it would be have. Yeah, I don't know if you get what I mean. But I think this will work. Um, all we have to do now is to make sure that uh, we have the correct environment variable when we execute this. Uh, 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 start Vivaldi bash script here. So just to make it easy here, we will just uh, set change the default here, maybe. Yeah, let's do that to correspond with, with this one. And no matter how, how we do this, we have to set it at least in this place and as an environment variable. Because the Python script here, it, it needs to know uh, the port when it starts the server here. And in this vb4c config, uh, this port number isn't used uh, to start the server, it's, it's used to connect the server behind the scenes here in the vb4c source. So, yeah, that's just how it is. Uh, so we set it 54 there, we set it to 54 here. And okay, no such process. Maybe that was a very bad idea. Okay, then we do start Vivaldi. And we get some errors. I know why we get these errors. Uh, it is because it cannot start the server here now. Uh, I don't think it's running now. Uh, it cannot start the server because the port the environment variable it will receive here with always get n because now the environment variable is known and it will get the environment variable from here you know 8054 but at the moment the environment variable is a string because in bash uh, just assume that everything is a string you know but uh, when you start the server it, it doesn't want a string it wants a number a port number uh, and not uh, a text string with the number inside of it. So we cast this variable into an integer doing this int parenthesis and inside that you, you write the, the value that you want to recast. So this could be uh, a string of any number you know and it would uh, turn this string which is really text you know into yeah, a real number so you can do arithmetics on it if, you, if that's what you want to do you know whatever this is why it didn't work uh, but now we shouldn't get those, that uh, error message starting server it seems to work okay let's open the settings window and then we also press ctrl e here to make sure that this really is working and it is working because it executed, it started uh, GBIM for us here. Amazing. Good, good, good. But what we wanted to do now is uh, to execute an external command. And we will ex actually exploit this edit with the Vim uh, command that is uh, available for us with this VB4C. Because I have found a way how to execute this edit with Vim and pass uh, other arguments than the actual text here. Because that is what we are really doing now. When I press Ctrl E here, it opens Vim 
and Vim opens with a temporary file here. We can see the temporary file name here and that file consists of the content of the input box from where we executed uh, edit with Vim. And that means uh, that uh, somehow uh, behind the scenes here in the extension it, it uh, fetches that uh, content of the input bo box and pass that as arguments here to the server when it makes a request to, to start uh, this edit with Vim. Because let's break this down a bit because this is the important part of the Python script here. Uh, when the server gets a request, it will test first to see that uh, the request comes from a Chrome extension. Uh, if it's not from a Chrome extension, this is a not uh, if here, then it just sets a variable edit to a blank string. But if it is from a Chrome extension, then instead it says, sets the variable edit to the output of uh, this function here, edit underscore file, and it passes uh, the argument content data to this edit file uh, function. And here we can see that edit file function, uh, which uh, creates this temporary file and starts the vim command uh, and passing the temporary file as the argument uh, and waits for this uh, process to, to, to exit. When this uh, process exits, it will uh, pass or return text here and text will be the content of the temporary uh, file. I know it's uh, whatever. It, we, we, we will actually not modify this uh, edit file function uh, at all. But just so you know what's going on there. Uh, and then when it have done one of these two, uh, either set edit to a blank string or the content of the, or the value of the temporary file. It, uh, it uh, does this thing here and that is basically it uh, uh, passes this edit uh, back into VB4C and then some more st stuff is done under the hood and in this case it will replace the content of the in uh, uh, input box here with the content of the recently closed temporary file. Yeah, easy. So what we want to do here is uh, execute edit with vim, the command, but we, will pa we, we want to be able to pass other stuff. Uh, and then here, in before we execute uh, edit file here, we could uh, um, test the arguments. And the arguments is of course uh, content data here. Uh, normally it's the content of an input box, but if we uh, can hijack this and, and uh, change this uh, content data, we could test if the content data, for example, starts with a handshake uh, word. And if that is true, instead of uh, executing edit file, we can execute some other uh, function or shell command and pass some other arguments. That's what we are going to do now. Uh, and the way to achieve this, uh, we can open the help page here for VB4C and then scroll down a bit here and you will find an example on how you write uh, a, a custom code block here. And this is a good example because it also uh, creates a custom, um, or maybe it doesn't, whatever. We, we, you can create custom functions in uh, VB4C and write those uh, custom functions uh, in JavaScript. And that is uh, very powerful because you can, you can really do anything you could do with JavaScript, you know, on, on a web page inside these functions and uh, execute those functions with, for example, a, a key binding here. Here, in this example, they map the tab key to execute this JavaScript function. Um, so let's copy this whole thing here. Then we go to our vb4c config, paste that stuff here. Um, here is the binding. Uh, we map tab key uh, to this call colon call that will execute a, a JavaScript function declared in uh, vb4c config here. And the function we execute is switch hint characters. 
and that is uh, dec declared here and, and you do that in a kind of special way here you write the name of the function uh, and then create this arrow a dash and angle bracket two curly braces and then you close the block with two curly braces on its own line like this and everything in between here is JavaScript. Now you are uh, not uh, here, the, the normal config syntax doesn't apply. Uh, this function here, it, it uh, changes the hint characters. Let's, we, we don't have to look into it at all, really. Uh, so let's remove that. And we can change the name of it also. Let's call it... Uh, external command I can remove this comment here however I saved this function here uh, because this sets a status message uh, we can just look at that and this two here means show that status message for two seconds I believe so we can say um, executing external command it can be good to just have some output like this just to test that that something is happening at all now if I save this uh, we should be able to press Control shift R to reload our config and then we have to do a refresh of the page I do F5 here and now if I press the tab key we can see ex executing external co uh, command in, in this uh, two second status bar okay but there is one interesting uh, thing in this example and that is this port uh, function that is executed they don't really describe it that much in this example but I have figured out what this really is because port lets you execute uh, vb4c functions uh, for example we could execute uh, edit with vim You know this command here so it have to be uh, typed exactly like like it is here with uh, lowercase e uppercase w and v here uh, and then you can see it also passes uh, arguments to, to the command where you can do that by adding the arguments in a JSON object and then you pass a dictionary uh, uh, with the arguments you want to pass but then you also have to know the name of the key that you're sending here and settings is not the name of the uh, uh, key when you pass arguments to edit with vim instead we pass uh, text is the name of the key i have figured this out by looking into the source and just testing and breaking things but this actually works and then we can change uh, settings here to any string we want no check this out reload the config refresh the page and now if i press the tab key you can see now it opened edit with vim and it uh, passed our arguments here any string we want uh, into the vim uh, uh, window or the temporary file uh, but what happens now because normally when you open edit with vim um, it replaces the content of the edit box uh, or input box you are uh, inputting text to. So here, uh, well, to be honest, I'm not really sure what happens now when I close this uh, window. That uh, content of that temporary file is now is returned to uh, VB4C and it doesn't really do anything with it, I guess. But this is is like the secret uh, uh, secret uh, door, <laughs> we could call it. Because remember now, this any string we want, that is in our Python script. That is what we pass here as uh, the argument to the function edit file. Uh, and it is uh, content brackets string data, uh, which is uh, element in or an index in this content array, which is created here. We don't have to get into that. And that array has a key called data and that uh, in turn contains a string containing the, the text argument uh, that we passed there. Okay. And um, 
this is how I have done this. Maybe there are much smarter, more secure ways to do this, but let's uh, let's create an array here. Command args is equal to content data. And content data, that's a string, remember, a string of text. But uh, Python have this split function that lets you, uh, if you use this on a string, then it will instead create a, a list of that string uh, delimited by the delimiter you specify as the argument to the split function. So if we do this split space here, that means that command args will now be an array um, where each uh, word separated by a single space will be uh, different uh, uh, command orgs here. I'm not sure if you're following, but whatever. And that would mean that the first index in that array will be any, the second will be string, the third will be we want, and so on. And this would also be true if we executed edit with Vim normally, uh, it would still create that array for us. But the way I want this to work is that we the first word here could be like a special uh, word, a secret handshake. So now I just write here handshake all caps. Um, and then I add an uh, else if here and test if the first uh, word in command orgs is equal to handshake if that is true uh, we do a sub process p open and here we can execute uh, any command we would like we, we want um, by specifying the command inside a list like this so uh, where each argument, including the, the command itself, is uh, an item in this list. So notify send could be the first argument, and the second argument can be uh, some text, like this. Uh, this will work, however, it will kind of, we will get some errors in the console and stuff here, and that is because um, it, uh, this Python script, it, uh, it wants uh, the edit variable will not be set when we execute it here. Uh, we could either do this, I don't like that. I'd rather do this actually. It is more or less the same thing. And then we can add just the pass command here, which is Python's uh, word for doing nothing. Okay, let's test this. Let's kill the server. Start Vivaldi. Uh, and now if I press, press the tab key, what will happen? any string we want. Yes, that's because we haven't updated uh, refreshed here. Uh, we could even go here instead and then just press page refresh. Now we can see uh, this is what will happen, you know. So pressing tab key now, some text, we got a notification here. It didn't open Vim. If we would change the handshake we have to edit the file uh, locally. We can never edit these settings and that's just good. So if we would change the, the handshake string here to handshakes instead, that means that the first word in our uh, little stupid array we are creating here will not match this string here. Now it will instead be handshakes. And then it will open the file with Vim and passing all the content data there. Uh, to test this, we can just refresh this again. See now, we have a different handshake word here. And I press tab. Now you can see, now it opens that in Vim. Right.
But there are um, some, some things I would like to do here that might seem a little bit overkill, but it's, it's best we do it uh, from the start here. Because splitting on spaces, that is not optimal, you know, because we might actually want to pass... Uh, uh, my intention here now is to only pass like a URL and execute that with an external command. But we could also maybe want to pass like the title of the page or something or whatever. And it could contain spaces. Spaces is a terrible delimiter like this. That would mean each word in the title would be passed as a, uh, uh, an argument. So it's better to have something else to uh, delimit uh, uh, arguments with. And I have found uh, a good... Uh, character that kind of works uh, for all uh, everywhere <laughs> this is how you write it in python uh, the character is the unicode character 1c here uh, it, it is like used as a field a universal field separator so we'll use that instead of uh, white sp uh, a space character but this also means uh, and this makes it much more secure, you know, uh, in, because at the moment, uh, if we would execute uh, edit with Vim here, and the first uh, word in an input box would be handshake. Uh, and I press Control E here now. No, that didn't work. Uh, handshake. Maybe I need a space also. Control E. Yeah, now you can see we get some text and it the, yeah it breaks everything you know. It shouldn't be super common, but you never know. And and those times it would be extremely annoying if it removed a lot of the text and stuff. So if we use a different delimiter, that would be extremely rare in uh, an input box. We we makes it this a little bit more secure for uh, from ourselves you know. So we use this uh, ux1c delimiter. That means we also need to uh, add that delimiter here as well. Uh, and the way you write it in, in JavaScript here is, uh, I don't remember, so I have to look into my notes here. Yeah, you just type uh, backslash x1c. And here I have even done this. I guess we can do that here as well. In this uh, command block we can declare a constant uh, variable here called field separator. Um, and then uh, this is another nice JavaScript feature that instead of using single quotes you can use backticks for a string. This will do exactly the same thing as it did before. But the benefit using backticks is that you can now uh, use um, variables uh, in, in a somewhat same same way here and then we can use the variable field separator maybe we can call it fs i think that's fine um, like this so now uh, when we run our server it will uh, split uh, split this string but it will only contain two arguments now handshakes and then this whole thing will be the second argument mm, and maybe we could even do this now instead of uh, hard coding the message we want to send here we could um, well notify send is kind of a weird uh, um, program but whatever we have our command orgs, so some text, we could do this instead, uh, could be the second index in command orgs. Let's see how this works now. And also handshake, we have handshake here, good. Um, I guess we should also just start Vivaldi to be sure that the server is running. We reload this guy, and now 
And now I press the tab key. Now it says any string we want. And that is passed here now from uh, VB4C. So next step here is of course to replace this with uh, a URL. And we could make it easy first and, and uh, use uh, the current URL uh, for the current page. If I press capital O, we can see this is the current URL. Uh, and it's a really weird URL here because it's a, uh, this is a extension page, you know, but whatever. Uh, and we can get that uh, by using document.url. And also, I think these examples were written quite a while ago uh, from this documentation. You don't need semicolons in, in JavaScript anymore, uh, so I like to remove them actually. Um, so now we, we set a, a variable URL uh, to document URL, which will be the current page uh, URL. And then we could pass that as an argument as well here. Um, and I think it's a very good idea to also put this handshake string in a variable because this, this is another thing that I recommend you uh, 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 setting your custom string. Sequel. Now, uh, yeah, content is this. Let's change it to secret password. And this means a secret password also have to match in our server. Um, vb4c server py um, here it it compares this uh, first argument in command orgs with this string handshake uh, but now it should be secret password but maybe even better uh, set set this in a va variable vb4c handshake uh, and we could set this as an environment variable as well. And then uh, we, we set a default value for this handshake is, is like uh, lolcat boomer. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, lolcat boomer. That that will not match. Uh, um, that will not match what we have set in it as a secret password here. And we should also make sure that it is a string like this. So now, if we reload everything, it will not work. Um, kill the server. Start Vivaldi. Service running. I press tab here now. And then it just opens it now and here we can see the weird uh, secret or, or uh, uh, delimiter it isn't even uh, available here in, in, uh, in gvim and our handshake didn't pass um, also it is because it says handshake ah i have to reload this guy but it will still not work uh, but now it says secret password here, and but now we can also see that it have passed the URL, so that is working at least. Uh, but what I just what I wanted to show here is that we can set our secret password handshake thing in um, just as we do with with um, the port as an environment variable here. We can set handshake. some default there but then export it to the correct uh, password or 4c hand shake is equal to and then I don't remember what we said it to secret password 
now it will export this environment variable before it starts the vb4 server and it will be available like that and of course this could be set where you set your environment variable so you could do this in a, yeah, yet a, a, another file and this is this is really good to do especially if you in, intend to uh, share your uh, dot files and stuff and then you can have like passwords and port numbers and stuff this this makes uh, things a little bit more difficult for, for the nasty, nasty people, you know, and that's good, I guess. All right. Um, kill it, start it. And now it should work because now the, the environment variables and stuff matches. I press tab here now and we get a notification with a uh, the current uh, page uh, URL. Right, uh, and now we we have gotten a long way here. Uh, last thing to do is to add this hint mode, so we can use uh, uh, hints instead, like like I'm doing here. But now I pressed F, the built-in hint. And the thing is, this is quite easy to do now, or <laughs> easy, easy peasy. Because when you declare external commands with these uh, blocks and stuff here, you can also add an, a parameter list here. So we can say that this external command, it takes uh, an argument uh, that we call link. And then, also I, I want to change this also. Instead of using tab, we will use capital S to ex uh, execute this external command. Uh, but we, I, I also want to use lowercase s uh, but this time, instead of using the call, we use create script hint, which is a function to which we pass the name of uh, a command block uh, to execute. And this will work now. This will create a, a hint when we press lowercase s, we will get hints just like uh, other hints. But this time, instead of following that URL, it will execute this external command and it will pass whatever link we selected as the argument to this external command. And that means we can use this link uh, thing in our function here. Uh, and we can do that here when we set the URL. Uh, we can test if we got a link argument, because when we call it with capital S here, then we don't pass any arguments. So we can test here if link is uh, not null, uh, then we set it to be link href. Uh, otherwise, we use document URL. This is a simple way to do this. Simple, but this is a way to do this. And I think it's also enough here. Um, we don't have to restart the server now. All we have to do is uh, reload the source here. Uh, and now we can see that we have changed this to, so when I press lowercase s now, we get some hints. And if I select, for example, f here now, uh, change log, you can see the URL in the status bar. That is the URL we should get a notification about. And we can see it says changelog.html. I can test it again, pressing s, g, and we get a different URL. So this uh, kind of works now. Um, of course, now it only executes, uh, uh, um, it only executes notify send here. And we have hard coded uh, notify send in the Python script. Somewhere, or oh, I'm in the wrong Python script. Let's minimize this source directory. Here we hard code notify send. Uh, I guess it is a good idea actually here to uh, specify the command. It is probably a better idea to specify which command we want to execute in the Python script. But that means that every time we change, uh, we want to change the command, we have to reload the server. So I have done done this. Uh, but I don't recommend it, but this is something you can do. Uh, the list we pass here uh, of arguments that we pass to popen uh, 
command args is also a list. An array is a list here in Python. Uh, and if we execute all arguments except the first one, zero, could write it like this, and this is valid. Uh, but now the first argument have to be uh, an executable command, otherwise we get weird results. And this can really uh, get you into <laughs> to weird uh, troubles here. So I don't recommend it, but this is something you could do. Uh, and then we can instead set the command here in, in our config file. Execute. And then we can set it to notify send just to test here. It's a, it's always good to use notify send as a test command because uh, things doesn't get too weird when you do that. And then uh, the execute command here that have to be the the first argument after the handshake, meaning we add it here. Execute, and then we also have to add a field separator between URL here. Now, if we try this again, we should get the same results. Uh, so I press capital S and that should uh, notify the current URL. No, we, it just say notify send. Something went wrong. Ah, I forgot uh, to restart the server. Start Vivaldi. Now the server is restarted. I press capital S and it print it notifies me the, the current URL URL. Um, I just like to have it set up like this. Uh, because um, then you can easily sh change this without having to restart this server and everything. It, it's, it's like one step less, but it's also maybe not the most secure thing in the world. Because this means that if someone figure out your secret handshake and your secret field separator, then they can ex execute now any command, just passing that as this string to this edit with Vim thing, or just send this request to your local web server if it knows the port to send it to, but all of this could, you could figure this out, you know, if you are a uh, hacker man deluxe. But we have made some things to make it more uh, difficult, but I guess not uh, having this ability is, is a good thing. But I have it anyways, because I'm so deep into dirt hacking and hacking myself, so, so I, I, I literally don't care anymore. Um, and just now to prove that this is working, Let's change this execute command here from notify send to do you remember girl? Um, girl, which I made a video about a while uh, before I started this Vivaldi videos is, is like a command that takes a URL, compares it against some regexes and, and then I can do stuff. And that is exact, exactly what I used uh, to change the wallpaper. Just to demonstrate this, let's uh, open reddit again. reddit.com slash r slash wallpapers. And yeah, maybe we should bring this guy to workspace 2. So we can see the amazing effect, you know. Do this, and then I would like a terminal here. So we got this guy, uh, and if, if I pass uh, the link to an image, for example, and now I will do it the stupid way here, uh, right click and copy image address, paste that here, that's a link to, to an image, and if I would use, pass that to girl, I guess we should quote it also here. Then, you see, I get this menu. If I want to save this image, or if I want to use it as my wallpaper, or open it, meaning open in uh, SXIV. I test here, wallpaper. Uh, save it in NWP. Numa, Numa, Numa. And there, now it set this as the wallpaper. I'm wondering now if this uh, link that I copied 
was to, to the thumbnail because this looks uh, terrible actually. Uh, but whatever, it doesn't matter. You, you see how it works. Um, we have now added to our config here to use gurl as the execute command here. And that would mean that if everything is working now, I will, to be sure, I, I resource the file and refresh the page here. Uh, but if we press S now, we get a hint. I select BD, which is a link to this image. Well, I guess we should have taken a, a different image because we already have this wallpaper set. Let's just take this. It's too late. Um, S, B, S, this hint here. We get the girl menu here. I select WP, NWP, Fogololo. And there, now it works. Easy peasy. Of course, uh, you don't have this girl uh, script here that sets, uses BWP to set a wallpaper and everything else here, but you got the, you got the basics. Um, and I think next video we might we, we can uh, do some girl uh, things. We can do this wallpaper setter downloading image uh, script. Um, but yeah, this is this is. Um, the simplest way I could show how to do this. Uh, I have it set up uh, slightly different in my personal setup and maybe we, we get back to this and, and uh, uh, extend it a bit. Because uh, it can be, as I mentioned, now we, don't, now we hard code each argument we pass here, but it can be useful to send other arguments as well. For example, somehow automatically uh, send the title of the image and stuff like that. I think we can look into things like uh, advanced uh, JavaScript uh, dirt hacking like that someday. But not today, because now we are almost up to um, one hour. The most uh, uh, complicated uh, dirt hack video I have ever done, but I think this is really worth it. You can, th this really opens a door to what you can do with the browser, you know. Uh, should also add, if you are using Pale Moon and Pentadactyl, you don't need to do any of this. All of this is already built in. You can execute commands with extensions. Uh, and yeah, whatever, we leave it here. Thank you for watching and have an amazing day, everybody. Bye.